Hello there everyone and welcome to another video. Um, tonight is purely a experiment because uh, this video that you're watching right now was actually shot with this camera here. Uh, this is, uh, if you don't know what it is, it's a Creative Vardo HD uh, pocket camcorder. And as you can see, it's quite small. I've had this for uh, quite some time. And obviously I've got two of these because, yeah, like I said, the video you're watching right now has been recorded with this exact camera. Well, not this exact one because it's, that, that's the one recording. But uh, it's a duplicate. I've got, like I said, two of them. Uh, I bought two because, I don't know, I just felt like buying two. And plus I thought, well, if one of them knacked up, I'd always have another one. And also, I can um, like have two charged up. And then maybe if uh, the battery ran out on one of them, I could use the other one and it would be ready and charged. So, because I don't know why, but these things take ages to charge up. I'm not sure how long they take exactly because uh, the little red light comes on when you're charging it. But the problem is... It doesn't seem to change colour when it's fully charged, so you have to just guess when it's done. Pretty much check the uh, little bar on the screen and see if it's uh, fully charged. So that's not a really good idea. But anyway, that's the camera uh, that I'm using. This shoots in uh, 720 pixels HD resolution, not 1080p, unfortunately, but it's still very good. But I haven't watched the footage from this uh, these cameras for a while, so like I say, this video is a pure test to test out what it's like and also if you don't mind if you watch this video could you let us know what you actually thought of the quality of the uh, image and sound on this uh, because the sound isn't as good as my other camera the one that's on my phone obviously that's always been the downfall of these uh, pocket cameras they never had very great sound at least this one didn't and Quite a few of the other ones I had with the little flip out, fold out screens, they often had ex excellent picture quality, but um, terrible sound quality. I don't, know. I don't know why they couldn't get the sound right, get the picture right, but not the sound. Um, so if you could let us know if you thought this video in the, with this camera, shot with this camera, was any good? Is it usable? I mean, do you think it's good enough to use on here compared with the other camera? Uh, just let us know if you can in the comments down below. I'd be very grateful if you could do that. So thanks very much in advance if you can do that. But anyway, I'll just put this to one side for the minute. Right, I've got some uh, Blu-rays that I've uh, picked up recently. Uh, these were all at bargain prices actually, so I was quite pleased with a lot of them. So let's get on with it. And the first one is this one which is, isn't it romantic? Actually, this one was a bit dearer. But uh, I quite fancy this one because it's a romantic comedy. And you, if you watch me channel regularly, you probably know I quite like uh, romantic comedies. So uh, it stars Rebel Wilson, as you can see. And uh, I, I did watch this one. I did actually fall asleep during it. But that's not because the film was particularly bad. Although, having said that, I didn't enjoy it that much. Um, uh, it's shot in cinema scope by the way, I would have preferred it if it was in 1A5 or 1A178 to 1 ratio so it fills your whole widescreen and what have you um, but I don't know the film, like uh, I like a lot of films from like the 80s and 90s and stuff and this one wasn't a patch on some of the romantic comedies that I like from uh, the 80s and the 90s like the Shua thing and stuff like that um, it just didn't have the same you know when you're watching a film and you're like really into it and you're like really like uh, hooked by the storyline and the characters and everything well this isn't really one of those types of films at least not for me I couldn't really take it that serious or anything the story and that you could tell it was just yeah it's, it's a movie it doesn't even it doesn't even pull you in very well I don't think it's, it's sort of very light fluff I would say and it's more like uh, focusing on visual, it's more of a visual feast, like some of the scenes in it look like like what you would see in a music video with a um, fancy, um, I don't know, very bright colours and 
lots of uh, music video, like musical type setups, you know, it's just a little bit like dancing and singing in the street and things. But anyway, apart from that, it wasn't too bad, I just didn't love it, that's all. And here's the back cover. So that's Isn't It Romantic, and that's uh, Region A, by the way. It's on, um, let's see, what's it on again, I forgot. It's on Warner Brothers' uh, label, so I think it's Region 3. So if you haven't got a Region A Blu-ray player and you want to copy this with, Robert Wil with Rebel Wilson, then this should play on your Region B Blu-ray player. You don't need a whole Region one. And the next one I've got here is a one I got for one pound. Yes, one pound. And it's in like brand new condition I got it off eBay. This is called the uh, the Fifth State, I believe. Yeah, it's a bit confusing because it's got a number five instead of the uh, F. So I'm not sure how a number five makes an F, but never mind. But anyway, it stars Benedict Cumberbatch and Daniel Brühl. Um, I watched the trailer for this and it kind of interesting. It's like a, polit a political thriller type thing. Uh, I mean, well, I'm not, not sure the exact year, but I think it's around 2012 or 13. So, yep, I got this for one pound. It's an Australian import. But I haven't watched it yet, so I can't tell you what, what I thought of it, unfortunately. So that's that one. Next one here is a double bill. A Disney double bill at that. And this one is... Pocahontas and Pocahontas 2 which is called Journey to a New World yes that's right I did say a new world and those of you watching who are awakened might know what that might be in reference to actually I'm not sure if it is in reference to that but it might be because I haven't watched the film yet so I don't know for sure but anyway um, this has got both films on one disc and I did read a review and it says it does not Effect the picture quality with them being crammed both onto one disc. Uh, they said the the transfers were already good. The first one looks the best. Uh, I haven't watched it, like I say, but I did read a review on Blu-ray.com, and they said the first one was way more colourful and better, a better, better looking transfer than the second one. They said the second one looked a little bit washed out, but since I haven't watched them for myself yet, I can't really say if that's accurate or not. But here's the back of this one. So that's Pocahontas and Pocahontas Part 2. And the next one here is a film starring James Spader and Maggie Gyllenhaal. And it's this one. It's called um, Secretary. Uh, this one's good. It's, uh, I think, if anyone's watching, could you confirm if this is correct or not? Because I don't know for sure. But I think this might be based on the books, uh, the Fifty Shades of grey books that the, the movies were made from but this came out before them films uh, the reason I think it's connected is because James Spader's character is actually called Mr. Grey in this movie and he has a secretary played by Maggie Gyllenhaal and they do a lot of kinky sort of stuff well he first starts off by ordering about and telling her what to do and everything as a boss with a secretary would do but then he st starts telling her to like bend over the desk and stuff which uh, most bosses who have secretaries I guess don't do that bit well at least not um, while well, they're still in work now as I don't think so anyway but anyway um, anyway he gets her to bend over the desk and he starts spanking her and she doesn't seem to object to it uh, so he must have uh, you know picked up on something when he was talking to her and that thinking she might be up for that type of thing somehow. Anyway, um, it's a good film. The transfer on this is actually um, very good in my opinion. I thought it was really good. It's uh, It's got some film grain on it, which I don't mind because I like uh, film prints. Although I shot on film, they look like yeah, actually showing a film print because I watched on the projector on the big screen. And uh, yes, it looks like it looked like a 35mm film print. Um, the sharpness was pretty good. Uh, there's some scenes that looked a little, slightly bit out, of, slight bit out of focus. But I think that was down to the camera focusing on the act when they actually shot the film. I don't think it was anything to do with the transfer. So, so it was probably originally meant to be like that somehow. But we didn't have it focused quite correctly or something. Um, I'm sure you could probably get better more of this. There's other versions of this available. Uh, there's a premium version of this because this is a German import. 
the premium version is a lot dearer than this one. I think it might have some extra scenes in. Possibly more of the sex scenes or something, or more nudity or something, I'm not sure. And I think there's another version as well, but I forget what that version is. It might be uncut or something, I think it's called. But them versions are a bit more expensive than this one. And here's the back, back cover of this one. It does have a few interviews as extras with the actors. Uh, James Spader and Maggie Gyllenhaal. And a trailer which is in German, which is no good whatsoever to me, because I don't speak German. I sometimes speak double Dutch, but I don't speak German, unfortunately. So anyway, yep, and there's no commentary or anything like that. One thing I must point out on this version, I don't know why, but the dialogue, the sound on the dialogue was very low. Um, the other stuff, like the music and everything, was quite loud, but I had to turn it up higher than usual to try and hear what they were saying on the surround system. So the sound was a big letdown, I don't know why it was like that. This is the second German Blu-ray release I've had where I've had that sort of problem. So I don't know if it's a common problem with German releases. But it was very, very low. But I could just make out what they were saying when I turned it up a bit higher. So that's Secretary on a German import Blu-ray. Right. The next one I've got here is also a German import. It's this one, it stars Kaspar Van Dyen and uh, somebody called Riley uh, Wanderbilt, who I've never heard of ever, and someone called Mylene Sarley, and I said Bali there. Um, I'm not sure what this is about, but I guess it's, um, I'm not sure, but maybe a, um, a sort of a lower budget version of like Marvel's Avengers type of thing, you know? Um, apparently this is a trilogy, this is the first film in the series. I watched the trailer and I was impressed with the trailer so I decided to pick this up. Um, you can get a double bill with the first and second film in of this I think. I think it's only got the two films in but this one's only got the one the one film. This one's the cheapest so I thought I'd try this one. Um, but uh, yeah, the trailer looked very good in my opinion. I liked how the film looked and everything. Lots of action and stuff. And I think there's some attractive actresses in there as well, so that's always a good thing, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's Avengers Grimm, and this has got a 3D version on here. The only trouble is with the 3D versions from Germany, I don't know if you know this already, but some of the ones that say that 3D aren't technically proper 3D, and they weren't actually shot in 3D. All they've done is put them through a computer system and made the picture like uh, go in a bit. Nothing stands out or anything, everything's all on the same plane. It just It's sort of 3D in the sense that it goes in a bit, so it looks like you're looking into your TV. So it's not really proper 3D, because nothing's like three-dimensional. It's, it's just, uh, it's hard to explain, but if you ever watch one, you'll see what I mean if you've got a 3D television or projector. So that's uh, the Avengers Grimm. And the next one I've got here is a film starring Penelope Cruz and Ben Kingsley, and it's called Elegy. Now, I hadn't heard of this one before, but I was looking for some uh, good romantic films, and this one came up at a bargain price, and it had two very good actors in it, so I thought, oh, I'll try this one. It's also in the 185 aspect ratio, according to the back anyway, although I watched the trailer, and I'm not sure if it was meant to be in that ratio, but... I'll, uh, I'll, I haven't watched this so I don't know yet if it even is because sometimes this company entertainment in video gets the aspect ratios incorrect on the back or it used to because this is an older release um, so this looked good anyway but uh, I'll have to check it out at some point so that's Elegy the next one I've got here is another knockdown bargain price one which I've been after for a while and this is Stephen King's It this is the uh, original TV miniseries version, which just runs it over um, three hours, seven minutes. And uh, the problem with this thing is uh, that it was um, shot for TV back in the day in 1990 or something, I think it was made. And it's Warner Brothers uh, disc, by the way. But the films are all on one disc. I think the, um, the DVD version was on two sides of a disc or something. Um, yeah, turn it, over, turn it over in the middle. But this is all on one side. But the thing is, it's full frame format. It's a square picture, 4-3 aspect ratio. But it's still obviously high definition. Um, I think it is, unless it's upscale, I don't know. Because uh, oh, I think it will be HD, because it was shot, shot on film, I believe. Even though it was made for television. Um, 
But the thing is, I haven't got the DVD version of this, but I did read a review of the DVD, and it said the DVD, the UK version, I don't know about the American one, but the DVD was in anamorphic widescreen 185 aspect ratio. Now, if anyone's got the DVD, the UK version, can you confirm, if it, is that true or not? Because if it is, why the hell didn't they put this one in the 185? Because it was obviously uh, framed for both aspect ratios, if that's the case, right? So, if that's the case, films like this, they make uh, room at the top and bottom of the picture, so, so no important picture information is cropped off when they put it into widescreen, because they crop the top and bottom of the picture to fit it into a widescreen shape. You see, for those of you who didn't know that. Anyway, uh, this is a, uh, I prefer this version to the recent remake, um, the cinema released version that was on, obviously it is on Blu-ray. Um, that version I just uh, didn't like it too much. But this is the better version in my opinion. So uh, yeah, this is the one to get. And if you're interested, I don't know if they've got any left, but Music Magpie was selling this for less than £3 on Blu-ray. So that's where I got it from. Here's the back. Right, the next one is the last one that I've got here for the minute. And this is the 3D version of a popular Pixar Disney movie called Finding Nemo. I've always wanted this film, but it was always at extortionate prices, especially the 3D version. Like, when this first came out, it was 18 quid for the 3D version. Uh, now it's like just over three pounds. So I thought, oh, I may as well get that now. It was the last copy left for this price, so I was lucky there. Um, yep, and it's got the 2D version with it. It's a very good film. I believe it's in the 185 aspect ratio, or 178. There's not much difference between the two. Just a tiny fraction of a millimeter on the border thickness on the top and bottom of the screen. But if you haven't seen this one, it's definitely worth checking out. I've also just got the sequel to it recently, but I didn't get the 3D version because it was dearer than the 2D version and uh, I don't know, uh, I needed a bargain so I thought I'd get the other one for the minute. You know, when you're running on a tight budget, you know, sometimes you have to make some sacrifices. I don't like using that word. I was going to say sacrifices, but um, you've got to cut corners, you know what I'm saying? So that's fri uh, Finding Nemo, uh, the Blu-ray 3D version. You know, I think it's weird the fact that you can still buy new, newly released Blu-rays in 3D. Like, I think Wonder Woman 1984 just came out in 3D. And yet, you can't buy the TVs anymore. That's weird. I mean, there might be an odd TV still made in 3D. I don't know for sure. Does anyone know out there if you can still buy any newly made 3D televisions? Because I haven't seen any. But anyway, that's just one of the things I was wondering about. It just seems strange to me. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. That's it for now. And if you've got anything like to, you'd like to say, which, which I highly doubt, because nobody ever does, clearly. But, um, <laughs> so, um, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from, from me. And don't forget to tell us what you think of the quality, the picture and the sound of this video, because I'm shooting it on an older pocket uh, HD camcorder, as I've just showed you at the start of this video. Let us know what you thought of it and stuff. So thanks very much everyone and I shall catch you all in the next video. Uh, so bye for now. Take care everyone. Ta-ra now.